just kind of a couple for fans and potential recruits and everybody to kind of get to know you a little bit better. But what would you, how would you describe your coaching philosophy? Well, I, my coaching philosophy is pretty simple. I want to make, we want to make the most out of what we've got and we want to fight like heck for a common purpose. And that's it. Nice. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. I think if you can max out what you have, um, and really devote yourself in a, in a, in a fight for, uh, for a, a greater, a greater purpose, usually something bigger than yourself, then I think you can, you, that's when the magic starts to happen. Awesome. Uh, what is your favorite activity when you're not coaching, when you're just completely taking a break from basketball? Well, hands down, it's fly fishing. Um, but usually I'm fishing for players instead of an average <laughs> species or other uh, beautiful fish. Um, but yeah, if I had if I had my choice, Joe, I'd be standing in a river somewhere with not another human being in sight. Uh, Social distancing. Yeah, ca- casting a casting some type of fuzzy, beautiful fly I tied into a little eddy or under a bush on the side of a river and watch some hungry trout come up and eat the crap out of it that would be ideal (laughs) well hopefully you're able to get out of the house soon so you can uh, get to doing some more of that but uh what what about uh your all-time favorite meal oh well listen you know i'm I'm a pretty big guy so you know i like to eat but yeah you're you're asking that's a that's you know you're (laughs) a guy that likes likes a lot of things but I got to tell you that, that uh, one thing that I think I could never shy away from is incredible fresh Dungeness crab. Oh yeah. On a, on a great piece of sourdough bread with some drawn garlic butter. Uh, you put those three things together and uh, I don't, I'm, I'm having some Pavlovian effect. Just thinking. I know, about right? It. Crab roll. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Might have to, I mean, I, I was going to say I might have to have one of those for lunch, but that's not really something you can just whip up for lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Well, finally, uh, quarantine, we're all watching a bunch of movies and TV shows. I know from the bus trips, you like your films. What is your all-time favorite movie? Oh, boy. Uh, well, let me just put it this way. I probably have a handful off the top of my head sure, that I, yeah. I, I could never get tired of. Um, I put Caddyshack and Hoosiers at the top of that list for sure. Classics. Uh, yeah. Excellent. But I'm a big Shawshank Redemption guy. Lo- love that. Um, you know, I, there's, there's older films. I certainly enjoy the old Das Boot and some of those, some of those, those old classics are great. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a few. Uh, overall, would you, I mean, obviously winning the championship at the end of the season has probably got to be number one, but besides that, do you have a particular favorite memory about this last season? Oh boy. Uh, you know, I, I mean, there's, there, there's a lot of great ones. Uh, and certainly I, I, this year one that stood out cause I don't think I've laughed this hard in, in a decade. Um, we, when we do a team breakaway at the beginning of the year. And I, and I could talk about the cha- you know, the, the games and whatever, but probably something I'll remember for a long, long time. Uh, they did a, a – one of the groups on our team breakaway did a skit, and they imitated various people on the team, including myself, and uh, coaching staff and other guys on the team. And I think Coach Willis and I were on the floor with tears in our eyes with the uh, – with. <laughs> with some of the reenactments of uh, our staff and players. I mean, that was just – That's awesome. It was just fabulous. It was just one of those things that was so touching. I mean, truly, Joe, there's so many things. And, you know, the per- the deeply personal things that, you know, I'll carry with me inside um, with a lot of guys on our team certainly is, is huge for me. And obviously for what we were able to do with our whole community and campus this year and – back in the gym and really I think giving our fans something to cheer for with our effort and our collective attitude and the way we played uh, together and it really was important for us to do that um, you know that was that was also incredibly memorable just just to feel the great energy in the gym and to bring so many people together 
um, you know, w- w- with around the whole infield, the entire infield community and campus, um, you know, in the dead of winter, that's something that's just uniquely special, I think, about basketball. Just talking about how coaching, what coaching is like right now in a unprecedented time obviously none of us have ever dealt with this and none of us in sports have ever dealt with anything like this so uh it's a very weird time but how have you been uh, staying busy since the college got shut down and you can't go on recruiting trips or anything no but there's still you know there's still plenty of recruiting to be done there's lots of film to be watched you know i some of it's some of it certainly has been some help with homeschooling um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, I spend every off season trying to get better myself. I do the same thing. I ask of my players, I want them to improve. And I tell that, and I'm committed to improving myself. So I, I talk with a lot of coaches, watch a lot of film, um, try to get feedback and learn from other people in different areas, not necessarily even basketball coaches that I think do things exceptionally well and try to learn from them. Um, stay connected through zoom, of course, with our players, texts, phone calls, emails. I mean, it's pretty nonstop, uh, you know, and it's, it's really a, a, the coaching in this era is kind of a lifestyle you can take anywhere. So sure. that in some ways that really never shuts down, but try to do the best we can to keep everything optimistic um, and to keep, which I think is a real challenge right now and to, to keep our guys connected. And it's, it's, it's in, in a way it's really good for me to be around the younger guys too, because their energy and optimism, you know, I think is uplifting um in, in particular in this in this time but uh yeah we're doing those things and and starting to build good energy and good thoughts and and purpose uh, and advocacy for uh for what lies ahead yeah so what have you guys been talking about just how to stay positive how to stay on their grind making sure all the schoolwork stays on top of these online classes they're uh, they're tough yeah i mean i check in academically and and really very little basketball honestly um it's to me a good time to work on your mental training um good time to work on your emotional training i think those are important i think i think learning learning to to uh, clear your mind and to practice being somebody who can concentrate to get a deeper sense of self and what what who you are and i think some real introspection is important and reflection uh, I think that's as, it probably as important a training as as we could do in the weight room right now. I mean, yeah, you ha- you have all those physical things, but I'm fortunate. I coach a bunch of guys that are hungry to work uh, on the basketball stuff, and so I feel in many ways the best uh, help I, I can or aid or guidance I can have is maybe in in some other areas um, that also speak to perhaps you know mental health and just a, a kind of the positive, optimistic mindset um building resiliency and and trying to really live in the present and things of that nature so um we're doing some of those things and then we've having a lot of fun you know we're trying we we did something very whimsical we had a a, we had a costume theme the other week we all showed up in costume and that was a ton of laughs and uh had a great time with that and so i think we're looking into some like hollywood squares and trivia and uh we had a a, an unbelievable game, a family feud on one of our road trips this year. Another, another great memory. So we'll look to get creative and do some things like that as well. That's awesome. Uh, well that, I mean, that all sounds great, but has there been anything that's been particularly challenging during this time? Well, I think we're, I think we're all challenged by what I call a d- the dull ache of isolation. Yeah. I think it, you know, I don't know that this is an acute pain. I do think that it is a dull ache and as, as like all dull aches, it wears on you over time um and so you know everyone in some way or another is dealing with some strain in this time and so there's some sensitivity to that and we all need to try to try to cope the best we can but that being said um and despite you know the the, these you know the fatalities and the things that we're all having to do and i'm sure the the suffering and pain of of many folks and that's not even to begin to scratch the surface of the economic impact that of our country the you know so so you know socioeconomic and emotional and a lot of things that kind of weigh in the balances here um that i think are trying but i i you know the best you can do you know in some ways we need to toughen up also you know we need to kind of brave up as a as a culture and society in my opinion and 
and a, a good time for us to take account about how we might be able to change our attitudes or our habits or whatever for the future and, um, you know, be real kind of introspective and then, you know, obviously plan and be action oriented for that uh, down the road. So you deal with it. I try not to get mired in too much of the negativity and the pain and, and more just try to stay focused on, you know, making the best out of the situation that we can, but also, being sensitive to, you know, the varying levels of strain that I'm sure a great many people in our, our society and world right now are experiencing. Definitely. 